Hi, welcome to the Career Refresh Podcast. I'm your host, Jill Griffin. I'm a former media and marketing executive turned career strategist and executive coach. I spent my career working my way up and through the ranks of global organizations and startups, and today I show others how to do the same. Join me each week as we discuss the strategies and actionable steps to leverage your strengths, increase your confidence, and develop your career well-being. Ready? Let's do it. Hey folks, welcome back to the Career Refresh. I'm glad that you're joining me today. This is going to be a two-part series, and we're going to cover the steps that I have found most helpful when thinking about and deciding on your next career move. Many people come to me asking for help so that they can figure out what they should do next. And as a coach, I meet you where you are, and then I get you to go wherever it is that you want to go. But figuring out what you want to do can be challenging unless you have a framework or a process for thinking it through. So I'm here to tell you that I have created what I call my BS buster, BS or belief system. It's how I build a belief system framework for whatever it is that you're trying to solve. But this particular framework will help you think about some of the questions and some of the things that are really, really helpful and and asking yourself as you're building the career that you want. So there are six steps. And the first is who you are. And you want to get clear on who you are. So I'm going to suggest that you grab a pen and paper for this podcast because some, I have some great questions for you to jot down throughout. The next thing is I want you to reflect on what matters to you and the results that you're going to create. Then we're going to move to the why. You need to have a compelling reason for your career move. I recently got an email from a listener who asked why they never accomplished their goals. So we're going to talk about why that happens, and it all starts with your compelling reason. Next is understanding, and we are going to clear out any nonsense that's going around in your brain around being confused. And lastly, it's action. We're going to talk about how to refresh your mind so that you can get into decision making. And mindset is really the fuel that is running through all these stages of decision making. We really want to nail your belief system that fuels your personal decisions. Let's start. First, who are you? There are so many assessments available online. Some of them are free. Some require a small investment. But these assessments are really helpful because they can spark your thinking. And they can also help you get some clarity on how to articulate aspects of your personality. Gallup's Clifton 34, Sally Hogshead has a one called How to Fascinate. There's UMAP, which is a career profile and a career fit program. 16 personalities. Gretchen Rubin has four tendencies. These are some of the ones that I find to be helpful. I mostly use Gallup's Clifton Strengths and UMAP's Four Pillars for Career Fit with clients since I'm certified in both those assessments, but there are plenty available and you can find them online. I work with clients to use these assessments with their thoughts, their skills, their values, their beliefs, and this is really what helps shape your identity. This is what helps you create your career stories. So wherever you show up, whether it's within your organization starting your own business, or wherever you're going next, you show up with a true and authentic voice that's true and matched to who you are. But this is just one leg in getting to know yourself. And as Dr. Ben Harper would say, personality isn't permanent. So use these assessments directionally. Do not use them as labels. You are not your assessment. Use them as helpful tools to gain perspective. The problem I often see is that people become confused about what they want and who they are because they have been on the receiving end of so many opinions and societal structures. People are always telling others what to do, who they are, what they shouldn't do, what and how to think, where they should go to college, what career they should be in, and what to do for most of our lives. And sometimes this is like very overt and other times it's really subtle. But even if you had the most progressive upbringing, you still then went out into the world straight into a societal opinions and structures, and then you're getting that reconditioning. Doesn't matter so much what you do. I know you may think it does, but it doesn't. 
What matters more is who you are. I always stress with working with clients one-on-one that who you are is going to show up no matter what you do. Meaning I've always been a coach, helping people, supporting their development, helping them network, introducing them to others, setting them up for opportunities that will lead to their growth and success. And I've done this for my entire career. And sometimes my title was wrapped with words like innovation or strategy or chief operating officer. I could have had account leader or media head in my title. It didn't matter which subject matter expert I was. I was always a coach and I was always helping people get to where they wanted to go. Really think about that, that who. And next, I want you to think about what matters to you. Identify your values, think about your purpose and determine what matters to you. Do your values need to be reciprocal? And if they do need to be reciprocal, Who do they need to be reciprocal with? Do your peers, your boss, your ELT, do they have to have the same values as you? Well, sometimes they do and other times they don't. Creativity is one of my personal values, as is innovation. I don't necessarily need those to be reciprocal, but honesty, integrity, trust, Those are non-negotiables to me. They must be reciprocal for me because when your values aren't in reciprocity with those that you're working with, then your values are violated. So when you're really thinking about your purpose and what matters to you, your values are so closely aligned to what matters for you. Don't confuse what matters to you with making a difference. I see this a lot. It's not the same thing. They come from totally different thoughts and energies. What matters to you and meaningful work is based on like your internal GPS. It's what makes you tick. But making a difference comes from an external GPS. It's making an impact that is noticeable. Others are going to see the work you're doing. They will benefit from the difference that you're making. So knowing what motivates you will help you determine what matters to you. Next, I want you to think about the result that you want. Grab that pen again. Ask yourself, What is the specific result I want? What would I do to get it? What do I need to be feeling in order to take those actions? And what do I need to be believing in order to feel that way? So let's play this out. I've mentioned this in other podcasts, but if it's your first time here, we talk a lot about the think, feel, act cycle. Let's say the result you want is to increase your executive presence and visibility so that you'll have access to opportunities and you also get to shape the culture. Thinking about what actions would you do in order to get that executive presence, in order to create that and up-level the executive presence. You'll need to get clear on your vision and you'll have to have a point of view. You'll need to build and use effective communication. You're going to have to cultivate a network, a strong network, both internally and externally. You're going to have to visually manage your stress. You're going to have to be cool and calm under really tough situations. And you're going to have to practice your own thoughts around self-confidence. And this is where I would usually suggest you work with a coach. So all that sounds good. That's what you're going to do in order to up level and increase your executive presence. But then you need to think about how do you need to feel in order to show up with that executive presence, confidence, focused, determined, knowing, innovative, curious, proud, maybe some joy and fun and being inspired. Those are just a list of some suggestions of what you might need to feel in order to show up with that level of executive presence. And next, what thoughts do you think you would need to keep believing in order to show up this way? So this is things like, I create impact. I create value wherever I go. I'm an effective communicator. I've built a robust network. You see how this works? These statements that come from I and I am is really what is going to connect you with the thoughts to take the action and to make the results. So when you think about your next career move and what you want to make, focusing on your results and working through the think, feel, act cycle is totally key. Our thoughts are going to create those feelings. And when we take action from those feelings, we are going to create our results. It is the think, feel, act. So these are the first set of questions that are really helpful in getting clear on what you want and making a decision around your next career move. To recap, the first three steps in this career decision framework, 
get clear on who you are, and use career assessments as one way to help you get some directional input. Two, what matters to you? Give yourself the opportunity to think about your values and which values need to be reciprocated. Three, what results do you want to create? And use that think, feel, act, cycle process to help you think through and create the result. Okay, folks, part two of the career decision framework will be in next week's podcast. And we'll go through the last three steps, which is really getting clear in your why and your compelling reason, busting through any confusion and building a belief system so that you can make confident career decisions. All right, my friends, I would love to know how you are managing your career-based decisions. Email me. The details will be in the show notes. All right, everyone. So thanks for joining me this week and tune in next week for part two of how to make a decision in your career. I'll see you soon. Hey, thanks for listening to the Career Refresh Podcast. If you're enjoying this and you want more information, go to my website, jillgriffincoaching.com. There you can find information on how to work with me one-on-one or my group programs, or even bring me into your workplace. I'll put the link to my website in the show notes. But hey, listen, before you go, do me a favor, rate and review this podcast because it definitely helps me get the word out to people everywhere so that they can also thrive in the workplace. All right, friends, I appreciate you. I'll see you soon. Thank you.